Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is LC. I'm going to post a video series about how to do revenue projection for companies that focus on oil palm cropping and milling operations. In plantation sector, we refer oil palm cropping and milling as upstream industry. Today, in the first part of this video series, I will talk about how to determine a company whether it is in upstream industry, downstream industry, or diversified. Here, to make the video short and focused, you can Google to learn what is oil palm, fresh fruit bunches, crude palm oil, palm kernel, processing of crude palm oil, and round table on sustainable palm oil, RSPO. There are three industries in the plantation sector, upstream, midstream, and downstream. Upstream industry includes cultivating and harvesting fresh fruit bunches FFB. They extract crude palm oil and palm kernel from the fruits. Those upstream companies with no milling operation will sell FFB to companies with milling operation. After processing, upstream companies will sell CPO and palm kernel to downstream companies. CPO made from the pulp of the fruit, it is edible and used in food products like biscuits, instant noodles, bread, and many many other food items. Palm kernel oil made from the seed of the fruit. It is mainly used in cosmetics and shampoos. The main business of midstream companies is trading CPO and CPO bucking. CPO bucking is enormous holding tanks that store crude palm oil. So far, I yet to find midstream company listed in KLSE. Please leave a comment if there is one. As for downstream, their business mainly focus on refining CPO and manufacturing oleo chemical. Technically speaking, downstream companies are more towards manufacturing. If you wish to learn more about the process of cultivating oil palm to producing palm oil, please refer to a link in the video description. How to determine whether a company is in upstream, downstream, or diversified? So far, the most effective way is to check out their operating statistics and management discussion and analysis in any report. I will share a few examples with you. The first example, Felda. If you click the company name in Busa website, it shows that Felda is classified in the plantation sector. Now let's go to annual report. If we go to management discussion and analysis in page 32, you can check out the group organization structure. Basically, as far as investors concern, there are three sectors, plantation, logistics and support business sector, and sugar sector. So looking at this, Felda is not really an upstream company. In the perspective of financial modeling, I would categorize Felda as a diversified company. Another example, KLK.
If you click the company name in Busa website, it will show you KLK is in plantation sector. Now let's go to annual report. Uh, page 14 in the financial statistics of KLK the main revenue contribution is from plantation division and manufacturing division to know what is manufacturing division we can go to page 169 so these are their products in manufacturing division so as you can see KLK is not exactly a pure company that cropping oil palm and palm oil milling and also they do property development another example TDM So you can see here, TDM is classified as a plantation company. However, the segment information in the annual report shows composition of revenue stream is 59% from plantation and 41% from healthcare respectively. So, TDM is not exactly a plantation company. Did you see a, one big issue in classification of company in Busa? Their classification is not accurate at all. I'm not sure whether you know about this or not. There is one index in Busa that tracks performance of plantation companies. You can view the chart by opening in chart nexus just now i have shared three companies felda klk tdm where busa categorizes them as plantation company but their operations are quite diversified don't forget some w group was categorized in plantation before they spin off their plantation and property businesses in separate listings there are some other companies are actually diversified but categorized as plantation. Now, let's check out Sarawak Oil Palm. Looking at their financial record and crop record, SOP looks like involving in upstream and downstream. Why do I say that? As you can see, they have their own crop and also buy fruits from outside crop. It means it's an external estate. They produce CPO and palm kernel themselves. So this is an upstream business. How about downstream business? We have to go to page 5. Did you see refined palm products? This indicates a downstream business. Now, we have to know what kind of refined palm products they producing. To know that, we can go to page 23. So, here they mention about what kind of plants they have in their milling operation. Their refined palm products are mainly biodiesel, palm oil, palm stearine, palm fatty acid distillate, and so on. SOP provided some details of their downstream production. With average selling price given in page 5,
you can still do some projection of revenue of their downstream business. Not many companies provide operating statistics of their downstream business. Then, SOP also have property development segment, but contribution to the group is very small. Um, in my opinion, you can ignore this segment. In overall, I will consider SOP as an integrated plantation company. The next company is Far East Holdings Bahar. As you can see in their management discussion and analysis, they have their own crops and also milling operations. So Far East is a typical upstream CPO companies. In KLSE, there are very few upstream oil palm companies with no milling operation, such as Sungai Bagan Rubber Company and Sin Heng Chan Bahat. That's all for today. If you enjoyed the video, give me a like and share it out. If you didn't, a dislike. Subscribe for more, ring the bell, and I will see you in the next one.